Software engineering and data science are two of the most popular tech fields out there. And in today's video, I wanna give you guys a complete career breakdown. Should you be a software engineer? Should you be a data scientist? And to help me out with this today, I have Sundas. She does data science at Google on the search team, and she has over a decade's worth of experience in the field. And you guys know me already. I've been a software engineer for a couple years now. And with that being said, let's get into the video right away. First question, what does a data scientist actually do? So a data scientist works on projects that are focused on solving business problems and product problems. Their skill sets include statistics, machine learning, coding such as SQL and Python. And if they're not doing that, then they're focused on either presenting their work or like talking to the stakeholders and gathering requirements. But one example of project I would give you, like a very simple example, let's say there is a new feature that is launched on, let's say, Amazon website. Okay. And a data scientist who is assigned to do experimentation, their actual work on that project could vary. Their first project could be like identify the set of metrics that we should be measuring to see what the success for this product looks like. Let's say after they have done their research, they have identified two new metrics that we should be measuring. Then their next phase would be to identify an experimentation plan and then run the experiment, design the experiment, do the analysis on the experiment, and then give the product and the business team recommendation on that product specifically. Another data scientist could be more focused on machine learning, where they are trying to solve problems in terms of like predicting sales or let's say Amazon Alexa. What is the amount of revenue that you can generate in the next 12 months from selling X number of Alexa devices? Like this is a very yeah. simple example, but it could be very product data science focused or it could be very ML data science focused. And I can talk for the software engineering aspects. So your day-to-day -day life, you're building, maintaining, and testing applications, building the websites, building apps, different tools. Typically, languages that you see are Java, Python, JavaScript. An example of a software engineering product, so you brought up Amazon.com. That itself, the website and the infrastructure around it is all software engineering. So color schemes on the page, all the different scrolling features, all those things, that's front-end development part of the software engineering package. Also also, there's the back end part of it, which is everything that happens behind the scenes. When you make a purchase, how does Amazon know that purchase is being recorded, the database behind it? That end to end workflow is typically what a software engineer does. I guess we kind of set up the infrastructure and you do the insights on it and yeah. analysis, right? Uh, exactly. And then, actually, more often than not, data scientists and software engineers work very well together. Mm. The experiment example that I gave, like in that use case, when I'm designing the experiment, I'm going to be working with the software engineer to like help that up that experiment. And then in the final stages, when I have figured out like this is the right feature that you should be launching, then I'm going to be going back to try to like launch that feature. How much math is involved in your role? I would say for a data scientist generalist, if you go to school, you have to learn math because school will teach you to build machine learning models by hand from scratch. But once you enter the industry, unless you're building machine learning models, from scratch or changing the models, you probably won't use that much math oh. because more often than not, you're using pre-built packages in Python for statistics and machine learning where you don't really get to use math that much. But let's say if your job does require that you do like hardcore machine learning, in that case, like math knowledge is very, very, very important. Yeah, and for software engineering, it's actually very similar to what you said. It's you take an absurd amount of math in university, particularly because people do computer science degrees and there you have like algorithms, discrete math, combinatorics, but on the job as a software engineer, you don't do any of that. You're just building, you're writing code, or you're having AI to write code for you. Um, there might be small like little things which I literally mean addition, subtraction type math where you're assessing performance differences making changes to the back end, making changes to the database, and you just want to see how much time it takes in addition. But that is a very, very small piece of it. Right. Typically, no math at all. Right. But if you're in school, please learn math. Yeah, you, <laughs> otherwise you'll fail. Yeah. <laughs> and speaking of school, what degree should someone pursue to get into your field? I actually come from a non-traditional background. I have a degree in business focused on information system. Oh, wow. And back then, data science was not that popular. Since then, there has been a rise of data science degree programs. So now there are like very well-defined curriculums and degree programs out there that you can actually go take. Let's say if those don't, don't exist, I would say like if I could go back to school, like I'll definitely pursue a degree in computer science with specialization in machine learning and data science. But just remember like the core skills do not change. So basically coding, statistics, machine learning to basically help you learn all the toolkit that is required for the data scientist job family. 
And do you need a master's or no? In the current job market? <laughs> <laughs> or in the previous job market? <laughs> Which one? In the current job market, I would say like having a master's could help, but it's not a required. Gotcha. Yeah. And for software engineering, I've seen people major in literally anything out there. Typically, it's computer science. That's the general one everyone majors in for software engineering. But I've seen people major in physics. I've seen people major in math. I've seen people even major in like biology, chemistry, and then they end up self-studying software engineering because it ha has like a lower barrier to entry, especially like compared to data science. They just do that and then self-study and then get into software engineering. So there is no hard set degree requirements. I think the easiest is computer science because you learn the fundamentals of computing, programming. You also learn data structures and algorithms, which is essential for interviews. But other than that, it's very versatile into yeah. what you can go into. Compared to the past, degrees are a little less needed for software engineering, just because of how commoditized it's become. Will AI replace data scientists? What do you think? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think AI will replace software engineers or data scientists. For those who are in the data science domain, automated ML solutions have been here for years. It's not a new thing. For those who don't know, like automated ML is, there is a tool that is built in. You just plug your features, your like basically set of data. You tell it which feature you want to train your ML model on, and then it will give you the output. It sounds very simple. Yeah. And it may seem like anybody can go and run it, like a product manager can go run it. The problem is that when you have to build that automated ML model, you actually have to to know what you are building and you actually need to understand what features make sense. You also need to understand what the output of an ML model means, like how to read it. What does R square mean? How do you like figure out like if the data is overfitted or underfitted? So yes, AI will replace certain elements. I see it as a productivity boost, but in terms of like replacing the entire job family, I don't think that's going to happen unless your job is like too basic. Yeah, speaking of which, are there any particular areas that, that are more at risk in data science? Please don't come after me. <laughs> <laughs> Hot so, <take. laughs> so I would say like with data analyst role. You're all gone. <laughs> <laughs> no, not all of them. If your role is just solely focused on like building basic reports that can be easily automated with the AI, that's like 80% of your job, then that is at risk. And that's where you need to like start building your skill set where you are going beyond just building basic reports. And one of the best ways to do that is get closer to the product and more closer to the business side of things. So you are focusing more on the strategy using data instead of just like being a data monkey and building reports. Right. And I would say for software engineering, in terms of this AI replacement, it will happen indirectly in that it's not going to be like overnight AI is going to be like everything and all the software engineers are kicked out but rather it's going to be over time things that can be automated will be automated so if you're doing low level tasks maybe even doing some like basic front end development that could be replicated so easily by these AI models instead of three engineers being UI engineers here, there's only a need for two. There's only a need for one. Companies will budget down because AI could be cheaper than having a full-time $200,000 software engineer. So the biggest thing for you guys to do is upskilling and using these tools to build and show that you are this like, holistic proliferating software engineer being able to code so much more than what an AI can do. Because why would a company want to invest in you when they can invest in something cheaper? Right, a large chunk of my work is just getting permissions. <laughs> so like just getting the right permissions to the right data. And I don't see any AI ever taking care of that. If it can do it, like please do. <laughs> as long as like all these big systems exist, it's very difficult to automate everything. So what are different career paths someone can go in this general data science field? There are so many different roles and job families you can consider. I think two that we have already briefly touched on is data analyst and data scientist. But you can also become a machine learning engineer that only focuses on machine learning learning. You can also become an AI engineer. In case you didn't know, AI engineer is part of the data science job family, applied scientist, which is basically a hybrid role of software engineer and data scientist combined. At Amazon, applied scientists are the highest paid job family because they are the people who actually build their models, but they productionize it themselves because they have the skill set of a software engineer to work in production. Yeah, and so for software engineering, the main ones are front end and back end engineering, where front end is everything that faces the user screen, frameworks, JavaScript of React, Angular, Vue, all the UI components are the front end. Back end is everything that happens behind the scenes, and those are typically in Java, Python, a couple other languages as well. There are 
adjacent roles that can also be considered software engineering sometimes, in which sometimes you deal with OS engineering and dealing with the operating system and very, very kind of low level computing. I've seen people go into the cloud, cloud engineering, setting up resources in AWS or GCP or Azure and creating the infrastructure on the cloud to help companies operate in a more cost effective approach. I've also seen some software engineers transition into defensive cybersecurity. It helps that you have a good computational background and understanding coding. So these are the typical domains I've seen people transition into, but the main one is still front end, back end engineering. One more I would add that I have seen a lot of software engineers become product managers. Oh yeah. And like engineers turn product managers actually make great product managers. Yeah. So that's obviously an option. As long as you know how to talk, a lot of engineers <laughs> don't. <laughs> All right, and now for probably the most juiciest question here. What's the general career salary progression of someone in your field? One of my friends who recently got a job as a data scientist entry level, their starting salary is com total compensation, which is base salary, stocks and bonus is about 200K. And then at the principal level, you kind of have to choose which which direction you want to go to. Do you want to stay in IC or do you want to go into the management route? Mm -hmm. One of my friends who works as a principal data scientist, total compensation is around 500K in Seattle. Honestly, everything you said, very, very similar to software engineering. Typically, Seattle, Bay Area, are these like top tier markets, you'll see entry levels total compensation being above 200,000. I've seen even closer to 300,000 and just entry level. Those are for typical like tech companies. Some other companies like Quant, for example, I've seen those offers go up to 400, 500,000 just to entry level, but you're also working pretty mad hours and right. uh, it's very, very tough to get in. I've seen principals earn 400 to $750,000 from people I've talked to. Some people end up becoming managers and going up that route. Some people just really love the technical route. Some people go into manager route and realize they have to manage people and hate that and go back to the technical route. But yeah, that, that's typically how it goes. All right, so now in terms of career, how do you land an entry level job in your role? And what particular resources do you have? As an entry level, you have all the projects highlighted on your resume that show different skill set. And if you can get an internship, honestly, like that will set you apart. And while you're in school, like start building relationships with the people who are working at the companies where you want to work so you can get referrals when it's time. In terms of like the interview prep, some of the resources that I would recommend specifically for data scientist generalist role is Lead Code and Strata Scratch. Strata Scratch is basically Lead Code, but is built for data focus role so like all the coding problems on it are targeted toward data scientists and data analysts then the second resource that i would recommend there are a lot of interview prep platforms such as like interview query interview quick start a lot of these are paid so i would suggest looking into it and exploring a little bit more and de doing some research before picking one but if you do need like more assistance if you need somebody to like handhold you these platforms can also be great. I personally have used one of the platforms, but most of my prep in the interviews is like I do it on my own. So understand the coding like SQL, Python, then stats. If you have taken stats in school, your textbook could be a great learning resource or your notes from school to polish up. And then for machine learning, think about how you can take a business problem and apply machine learning to it. In the interview, you will get case studies where they will be like, oh, we're running into this. How do you think we can solve this? That's where you'll have to have practical knowledge of machine learning to be able to say, oh, if we want to improve customer churn rate, this is the machine learning model that we can apply to see like if whatever we're trying is working or not. And for software engineering, I would say, Pre-interview, if you're struggling to land an interview, your application needs to be very strong. Obviously, having your resume primed and perfect for that. Do a lot of coding projects and make sure whatever you do is an impactful coding project in terms of you're building something, you're solving a case study, using your software engineering skills. If there's a business that needs assistance and you create a website for them, you create a dashboard for them, that'll be way better than just like copying off a project on GitHub or a YouTube tutorial, like showing the impact of your projects. Get a referral, then after that, you end up landing an interview. Typical software engineering interviews, lead code prep, the data structures and algorithms problems. Geeks for Geeks is a great source. I know Neat Code has a lot of great products a lot of people like, but whatever you do, make sure to practice it ideally with other people so you can get real-time feedback. The resources you provided were great in terms of doing interview prep, but there's also Pramp.com interviewing IO where you actually get to interview with big tech software engineers. They do interviews on the regular in their in part of their job. So just having an additional one in which they can give you the, that feedback at a, like a lower stake so you're like less nervous, I think is wonderful. All right, now this might be a little controversial, but who should not go into your field? 
of many skills, the number one skill that is needed for the data scientist role in general is dealing with ambiguity. Like a lot of the data science problems that you will start off of, they will be very ambiguous where you would have to figure out how to define that into a problem and then solve it. But going by the core skill set, I would say like if you don't enjoy statistics, you don't enjoy machine learning, don't do it. I have seen a lot of people like give advice that like when you're trying to learn data science, start with Python, start with SQL. Like just remember that SQL and Python are tools to apply data science. Yeah. The actual data science is statistics and machine learning. So if you don't enjoy either of those, I would say like find something else. Yeah, and for software engineering, if you don't like coding, if you don't like thinking like a general problem solver and building things, this is not the field for you. 95% of your time is going to be building, is going to be coding. We don't want to discourage anyone, yeah. right? The point of saying this, like when you're picking something, pick something that you're excited about because the chances are in either of these fields, you're going to actually have to put in extra work throughout your career to learn new skills and learn, build new things. And the only way you can like keep building your skill set and keep learning if you're really passionate about it. And if I want to get a job, what is the number one coding project I should do in each field? One project example that you can do is go to Kaggle and find some data set that is related to e-commerce website. For example, it could be Amazon and then define a problem on it. For example, the problem that you're defining, you have the Amazon's sales data for the last 12 months. Now you put a problem around it and say like, okay, I want to predict for this customer segment, what is going to be the total revenue in the next 12 months. And then you basically build your machine learning model, some sort of regression model to try to predict what the expected revenue number is for a customer segment in the next 12 months. Then you evaluate, go back and forth and try to evaluate if this is the right model, or if you need to select a different model. In your resume, when you're mentioning that project, you can say like, build a linear regression model to predict X million revenue from Amazon data set using Python X and X library. It shows that you know machine learning. It shows that you have the business acumen, like you can take a business problem and you can like solve it with the statistics and machine learning and coding. And then it also shows that you know Python. But as I said previously, like you need to have multiple projects, yeah. especially in the current job market. Right. Yeah, and for software engineering, like I had mentioned before, you need impactful projects. So the example I usually try to bring up is, let's just say you're a student in university, right? And there's a club out there, like debate club or a English club or something where they don't know a lot of coding, ask them if they have any things that could be automated. Maybe it's the email sending, maybe they need a website, maybe they need some automated way to collect payments and throw it into a database or whatever. Find whatever that thing is and construct it for them. And you use your skills or you ask AI to teach you those skills and to build it out for you. And then you can clearly quantify the impacts that your project's able to do because all of a sudden they have X amount more money or all of a sudden they have X amount more signups. You throw that concrete numbers onto your resume, that's how you really attract the eyes of the recruiter and show that, hey, I have these skills, but I also put it into display. Guess what? Let me do that at your company in this project on that team. All right, well, Sundas, thank you so much for being on this video. I really hope that you guys got a lot of value out of it. And also, let me know in the comments below, software engineering or data science, which one are you picking? Data scientist, uh, for sure. You know the right answer. <laughs> and also, you guys should know by now, Sundas is a big time tech content creator on many platforms, and she has a data science and tech newsletter. All her links will be down below in the description if you want to check it out. And also, if you're interested in my tech newsletter, that link will be down below in the description below. And if you guys like this video, make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll catch you guys next time.